lady ballers. Welcome back. We're soccer props. And it's game time. What up, lady ballers? What's up? Still in separate buildings. Separate buildings, but it's Friday. <laughs> Friday. Yeah. Oh, Fridays are the best. <laughs> Fridays are the best, guys. Um, we have a really cool guest today. We've been saying full circle a few times about her because it really is full circle. We met her at the World Cup in what year was that? 20? 2015. And Leslie, so, it's Leslie Osborne. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> Spoiler. But Leslie's so cool. Like, right from the start, she's always been a huge, like, cheerleader for soccer or pops. And she's always been so helpful and just, like, wanting us to succeed. Um, and it's amazing that she was someone that we looked up to as a player for so many years. Yes. So, so for those of you who don't know Leslie Osborne, she played on the U.S. Women's National Team. She's an absolute baller. And then besides accomplishing all of that, she went on to start her own brand with uh, four other women, right? Yeah. Uh, four other like former teammates and soccer players uh, called Sweat Cosmetics. And she does sports commentary for Fox Sports. So yep, she's a Fox Sports analyst. She's she is a balancing, a, spinning she a lot of plates at the yep. same time. And, yes. and she has three beautiful girls who are going to grow up to be a bunch of soccer studs hopefully <laughs> and she's just an overall amazing role model we look up to her so much um and we really think that you guys are gonna like this episode today i feel like this episode probably has the most advice we can give not only athletes but just as a whole as a female in general yes. so i'm really excited for so everyone many. to hear it all right enjoy guys <laughs> so. do you think do you think that they will uh play soccer i hope I hope. Do they like I mean, do they like sports in general? Like activity? Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're always I mean, scooting around and everything. <laughs> yeah. That's all we really have here is a lot of like balls and equipment. But recently everybody's been getting them like tutus and like princess stuff. And um I'm like trying to embrace that. Um, but I'm like, you know what, you guys can do that and be like feminine but still be a badass. So that's fine. Mm -hmm. Oh, of course. As long yeah. as there's a sport piece to it. If we're just gonna do dance and be in ballet stuff, that's not gonna work for us. So <laughs> <laughs> there needs to be some sort of like sports ball involved. Just a little bit of contact, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Olivia loved to wear all her soccer jerseys. She was like obsessed with it, and now all she wants to do is wear these this princess stuff. So I'm Aww. like Okay. They'll keep going through their phases she, and everything too. She can wear a jersey with a tutu. That would be cute, I mean, actually. Yeah, oh. as long as she's a rock star, that's totally fine with me. <laughs> that's so cute. I love it. Are you so, guys super busy, or what are you guys up to? What's we it been have like? been really. We've been. We have been really busy. Honestly, as you know, it's been so crazy, like transitioning to like the digital world and not yeah. doing any in-person stuff. But yep. we just um, re recently came out with our Lady Ballers Guide to Anxiety. Yep. It's a guidebook, and that has been like an animal. Like we've been working on that for so long, and we're just so excited to start promoting it. That's awesome! Congratulations, yeah. good for you guys. Thank you. What about Thank you? you. How's Sweat Cosmetics? Good. Um, We've actually done better, I think, during this than we thought, just because more people are at home, they're outside, they're being active. I think people are like taking care of themselves more because they, with less commute and more time. Um, so that's been really good for us. I hope that continues on. Um, and we just launched in Dick's Sporting Goods. So that's Ooh, a that's great- That's awesome. Yeah, that's a good, we'll, we'll see how it goes. It's super sports specific, but- um, you know, they have a really big reach. So we're, we're, we're hopeful and we're working on kind of like a cheaper line, um, for like CVS's and Walgreens, um, more so like cool. price affordable. So yeah, we're busy. And I mean, knock on wood, I hope this continues on through the winter, but we usually hit a little bit of a lull when it starts to be like November because people aren't thinking about sunscreen as much, mm -hmm. even though they should. Um, that, that's you know. true. So, but we just have to get creative kind of like how you guys are just doing like a ton of digital digital stuff we have to do the same we have to figure out how to reach more people um digitally and and try to just get more creative and and maybe come out with another product that's not like so sunscreen focused when people are not thinking about sunscreen mm -hmm. yeah it's so true like the seasonal stuff sometimes yep. struggles like we i yep. mean we we know that and honestly what going into it like you learn as you go and i I've, I've seen um a bunch of influencers like wearing your stuff recently and yeah. like Christy, Christy Mewis and um, 
Sophia Huerta. Yeah. Like I keep seeing some stuff and it's so awesome. So congrats yeah. on like your success with all of that. That's great. Thank you. Right back at you guys. Thank you. Did you always know you wanted to be an entrepreneur or was that something later that you figured out? No, it came, it came later. Um, I feel like when I went to Boston and one of our owners was a venture capitalist, that's when I really started to like understand what startups were, how they worked and really started to get into like the nitty gritty stuff. Um, and he'd always tell me on Mondays were these pitch meetings. And so he would tell me all these stories, of all these like entrepreneurs coming in and they get 10 minutes to like, wow them. And they would sit around this table, kind of like a mini shark tank, but in an office yeah. room. And I was <laughs> so fascinated by it. And I'm like, he, he, he said within two minutes, he knew right away if he was going to invest in them. And I think like that triggered something in me that was like so cool, but it wasn't until I met the girls that that idea came. But I think because I met Dan and kind of started to understand it and I met the girls who had an idea, it kind of all came to life. Cause I don't know if I would have done this obviously without meeting them. I know I wouldn't have come up with sweat cosmetics. I don't know if I would be another like entrepreneur in a different way, but I feel like everything kind of streamlined at the same time. And it was all about timing, you know? Do you feel know. like you're on a team again? Yeah. Like, was that like another, was that like a good transition from being on a physical soccer team to then a team in the workforce? Totally. It was like the smoothest transition I think that I could have had. And um, I feel like, I wish more athletes had the opportunity to, to do and to talk to athletes like in the moment while they're playing professionally to understand that that's the time to think about like your transition, even if you're not ready for it, to think about what else you like, what else you're passionate about. Um, Cause for me, you know, my big identity was Leslie Aswin, the soccer player, but because I did the work while I was playing and I, I met the girls and we came up with the idea. It took us three years to launch. So it gave me time to process and to trans, you know, to go from that soccer plane to entrepreneur world smoothly because I had something I was super passionate about and that one that I wanted to wake up for in the morning. And I think that's what a lot of athletes struggle with is like, what else they're passionate about? What else they want to do besides play that sport? Because that's been their identity their whole life, you know? Yeah. You know, what's so cool. And I was going to say, when we were growing up, I feel like when they ask you what you want to be when you're older, when they ask you what you want to be when you stop playing yeah. soccer, I never remember anyone saying, I want to start a business or I want to create something. Mm -hmm. And when we yeah. ask girls at, at like, we'll go to summits or panels and things yeah. like that. I, a lot of girls would be like, I want to start my own business. I'm like, I can't like, that's amazing to me. Cause that was never a thought in my mind at their age ever. But now totally. I think there are so many women, especially athletes. I feel like that go on to do, I feel like athletes for some reason are meant to be their own boss. For sure. Mm -hmm. You know, sure. outside of the sport. So, so many of them go to start a venture where they create or they start something. And I feel like that's become so much more normalized now, which is so awesome to see. I love it's, it. It's so true. And also just to go off of that, I feel like athletes are realizing that they can stay in the athletic world and do things that still will fill their cup, you know, their soccer yeah. or sports cup. And like, they don't necessarily have to play, but they're a part of teams that love, you know, like a, a, work team that loves sports like it just yep. like it keeps you with the people that you've loved like for so long and you love the competitiveness and all the stuff that comes with being an athlete and I feel like it's just such a great thing and we're so blessed like yeah Shannon Shannon and Alana and I are like literally teammates awesome. doing stuff with soccer and Leslie you're same thing do, doing stuff makeup for or sunscreen for sports like it's just yep. so cool um yep. and I hope that I hope that like Alana said like athletes young athletes can still continue seeing that in the future for them too totally and and all the skills that made us successful as athletes they translate into being entrepreneurs right like that's our biggest strength and that's what's helped us and you guys be successful is your goal orientated your determination your dedication your passion your hard work everything that helped you get to where you're at in the field is also doing the same so like you said it translates perfectly and that's why encouraging more athletes and young girls to go on and do those things and playing sports is only going to help them succeed in whatever else they do. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious, do you have any characteristics that you had as a player that you can see like is in your role right now with work? Yeah, I think it's my foundation of just like hard work. Um, yeah. That helped me be so successful on the field. Even as a young girl, it was like, even if I wasn't playing well, I could always rely on my work rate, right? That's something like no matter what that you can control. 
and I feel like in sweat, I work my butt off. And that is something that nobody can take away from me. That's something that even the days that are hard where, you know, we're deflated, like something happens. And, you know, as you go owning, a, running a company of ups and downs of good days and bad days, I can always control my work rate. And that's something that always gives me confidence. And I think when you talk about you're doing whatever endeavor you're doing, if you have that confidence of working hard in whatever you do, that's going to help you be successful. Um, and that was something that really helped me as a player that's now translated as an entrepreneur really well. Um, and also just being a team player. Um, I think that being a good teammate has also helped me be a good co-founder. There's five of us. Um, and it can be difficult at times to have five women, not only women, because I think if you were, you know, a male entrepreneur having four co-founders, it would be the same. Just having that many people in a group, it makes things more difficult in some ways, but also for us, we look at it as an advantage, right? But I think being a good teammate has really helped um, our company be successful. And um, I'd like to think that that is something that I bring to the team too. I know my strengths, I know my weaknesses, and it's taken us a while to figure out how to stay in our lane and let the other people that are good at those things stay in their lane. But I think that's something that you learn your role as you go, just like we did on the soccer field. We just say the same thing all the time. That's so funny. I like what you said like about the hard work though, because I feel like a lot of players have that mentality, but then yeah. when they go after college or if they stop playing as a pro, they don't know where their confidence went, but it's with the hard work. That's why you yeah. have that confidence. So if you do find something you're passionate about, like it all connects. Totally. So instead of being stuck at a job where you're just unhappy, if you find something mm -hmm. that you love to do, the hard work and confidence will come together. So hopefully yeah. our listeners can find that in whatever you know path Perfect. that they decide to take. But yep, exactly. So what has been one of the biggest, oh, sorry. No, you can go. I didn't mean to interrupt you. You're good. I was gonna say, what has been one of the biggest uh, hurdles for you to overcome as an entrepreneur? And then as a player also, I want to <laughs> I'll do fair first. Um, the, the biggest hurdle I had was getting cut at a young age from the 2004 Olympics. Um, being young, 18, 19 years old, taking off a, a year in college, being away from college life and, and my teammates and, and, and going to try out for the team with my role models, Mia Hamm, Christine Lilly, Brandy Chastain, and being a baby. I mean, there were four of us, Lindsay Tarpley, Heather Riley, Lori Klepney, and I, to take off a year to go after something that you desperately want so bad, to work so hard for it, and then just get cut and say, well, you're not good enough, you don't have enough experience, and then just kind of send me back off to college. That was a turning point. Um, it was a very difficult time to try to regroup my confidence, my why, um, I felt defeated um, and I lost all the confidence that I had had and that never had happened to me. So I had to like step away from the game and rebuild that confidence and go back to the things that made me successful as a player and try to find that love again. Cause honestly, that was the first time in my life where I lost that like passion and love for the game. Um, and then the second time as a player was just having such a major injury and making the Olympic team in 2008 and then having my ACL and ankle reconstruction um, and just feeling so many crazy feelings, um, dark times um, where, you know, I didn't know if I'd ever play again. And at that time, that was all I knew was soccer. And for me to watch my team win the gold medal, luckily I had Abby Wambach go through that. Not luckily, I'm, that that happened but fortunately she was with me and we got to recover together and watch the team together but to watch the team win and not be part of that after working four years later to make that team um there were some dark times um but that's what made me even more resilient um and stronger and dedicated and passionate and um what really led me to figure out what else I was passionate about besides playing soccer and so I look back at that time and I'm like that was a blessing in disguise um, I didn't come back to the field for a year and a half, which allowed me time to figure out what else I wanted to do. That was TV, that was maybe going to business school, um, working with nonprofits. I started working with a startup company and being an ambassador and really starting to see um, what else was out there, what else you know, ignited my, my fire and, and what made me wanna wake up and go to rehab for five hours and then go do something else. Um, and I'm super thankful for that time. 
Um, so I look back at those two hardest challenges and I'm thankful for them. And those were turning points in my career as a player, but also as a person. And then as an entrepreneur, I think the hardest part of being an entrepreneur um, and translating from the soccer field is, is being part of a group of five women. I think it's been really hard, um, especially when we're not in the same location. Um, that's hurt us. I think it's really helpful when you're, uh, when I'm used to being face to face with people, like I love being in the same room with people. It gives me energy. It gives me this like, um, excitement and just adrenaline. And I think being with my partners, um, that we're not all in the same place has been difficult. Um, but also we're learning as we go. Uh, I think a challenge for all of us is like having to pivot constantly. Mm -hmm. And when you haven't done this before, like you guys, I'm sure it's like, you figure out as you go and you might think you're going down one path and then something happens and you have to pivot and go down another path. And no one's telling us what to do. Um, no one's giving us a, a training plan. Like we're so used to, like, this is how you get fit for the beat test. Mm -hmm. you do this, this, and this, like there's no course plan to be an entrepreneur. Um, and so for us figuring out as we go, we've made mistakes, but it's, it's our personalities and being athletes that are able to we bounce back quickly and okay, we learned this. We're never going to do that again. Okay. We went down that course. Now we're going to have to pivot and go down another and it's constantly moving and shaking and trying to figure out how to stay together as a team and make those decisions quickly. Um, learning our lessons. And also I think the hardest part for us, it, it's, it's none of us really have business backgrounds. Um, one of my partners, Emily is a CPA and thank God for her to bring that 10 years of CPA experience to our mm -hmm. company. But, um, you know, we're, we're running this as athletes turn entrepreneurs, which is pretty incredible. Like you guys, um, you, you just figure it out. Like there's been some really difficult times and some really amazing times. And the key for us is not to get too high in those highs and not to get too lows in those lows and try to stay consistent. Um, and, and, and communication, I think that's the most important thing that we're learning as a company, but you know, we're, we're running into, uh, hurdles all the time. It's, it's how we handle them. And now that we're five years in, we've learned a lot and we just hope that we um, take what we've learned in those previous experiences and apply it to our next ones. That's awesome. I, I feel like this is the year of pivoting. Yeah. <laughs> like that's oh, yeah. all we've been saying. We're like, all right, this is what we used to do. We got to pivot. We got to pivot. But I feel like just like with your injuries, there's a silver lining to everything yeah. and what we're learning through this crazy year, like it's going to help us in the future. 100%. But, and I feel like what you also said about like the injuries, how you did find the positives through it. I think that's something that so many professional athletes do and that's why they're successful and that's why they become professionals because yeah. they can take those negative times and those dark times and turn it into something positive and, and something that they learn from. Yeah. I was sure. going to say, even in the, in the moments when you weren't moving vertically, you made sure you were growing horizontally. Mm -hmm. Like you were stuck playing that. and trying to recover, but then you grew yourself elsewhere over here and, and broadened your, your abilities during a time where you were stuck. So I think that's so awesome and so important. So many people get so stuck. They get so stuck in the feeling of being stuck that they yep. forget that there's like 80 other things that you could be bettering yourself doing just because you're stuck in one facet, you know? Totally. So I remember going to rehab and them wanting to like me to bend my knee, like, you know, two degrees. And like, that was like the big moment, five hours into my <laughs> rehab. It's like, can you try to just bend your knee a little bit more? And like, awesome. That, that was not a great feeling to know that that was like my biggest accomplishment of the day, but to go on <laughs> yeah. in that day and go on and do other things that help me be happier, that help me give me a purpose. That's the most important thing. And let's be honest, there's, as athletes, you have a lot of time. You maybe have one session, maybe a double day, but even if you have two training sessions a day, you have still a lot of time to go out there and do other things, you know, whether it's coaching, whether it's interning, whether reaching out to companies to try to get some experience, you have the time. And so when I talk to current athletes um, and they say, we just don't have time. No, you do have time. Yeah. It's you making the use of that time. And it's your choice to want to go do something mm -hmm. else because that, that can't be an excuse, you know, that that's, this is a platform that you have and to use that platform when you're a professional athlete is so much stronger than till after you retire and then go, 
Well, now I'm a retired athlete now trying to figure out what's next. There's, there's a huge difference there. I just think this is so key for young female athletes to listen to now because like they can't, they shouldn't wait till we had these, you know, horrific, like hit, we got hit in the face after we quit or retired from soccer because we didn't know what life was like without it. And I think it's just, it's, it goes along with what you said when you were injured, it gave you more time to think about what you cared about. And I think it's very, it parallels like what's going on with COVID all these athletes, like, really had no soccer and no team for the longest time, but it, it allows them to do the inner work and do other things that like you were saying, they might not focus on as much if they were still playing. So there's definitely silver linings to all of this. And I think they should definitely take your piece of advice to just explore yourself more. Like yeah. think about, think about yourself as a whole. Like we're not just soccer players, even though we yeah. really think that we are, you know, like we're well, other and, things. And part of like, I think playing for the U.S. national team and playing professionally, we had to be all in. And if we weren't focused 100% on being a soccer player and being the best we can be, nutrition and watching video, if we were thinking about something else or doing something else, it was looked upon like maybe we weren't as focused. Maybe we didn't want it as much. But really, what I found with me is the sometimes when I didn't focus and be as obsessed with soccer as I was, I actually played better when I had other things Mm -hmm. going on. Because when I played, I was more loose and free and I found the love of the game more and I wasn't so hyper-focused on every touch I took and analyzing and breaking down my game. And so, you know, for these players right now in COVID, like I see this as an opportunity of working on your weaknesses. Like you have a backyard, no one can take away a park or a backyard. Work on the technical side of your game, right? If, if it's not, if you're not as good with your uh, left foot or your weak foot, now is the time to do that stuff. Like you can always find a way, um, even within a 10 by, yard, 10, 10 by 10 yard space to work on your game. And so if it's the technical side, take that, go against your garage or your, maybe not make your parents mad, but go against <laughs> the side of your garage and work on, you know, your one touch um, passes and, and you're the outside of your foot. There's always ways that you can get better. And I think right now, it, if it makes you uncomfortable, that's, probably means you should do it. And if it's, um, you can't have an excuse right now. I feel like if the people that are taking advantage of this time, um, are the people that are actually going to come out ahead because you're, you can work on the things that aren't your strengths or your weaknesses. And this is the time to do those things. Totally. Taking advantage of, of the time is absolutely key. And I also like the point that you made, like, like if you're so obsessed with something you end up burning out and then you end up not loving it anymore and it happens so often with athletes so like what i've tried to start doing more is like if i'm not feeling it i take a walk or i do something different and just like even if it's drawing like something different like i feel like it just brings you back to a fresh start and you can you know crush it again next time but like just reeling it back sometimes is actually the advice that a lot of athletes need so that's great yeah yeah so I, we obviously knew you were a commentator because that's how we met you. Like we I met you know. in Canada when you were with Fox Sports, like doing the commentating for the World Cup. And it just got us thinking like, we, we know a little about your story, but can you tell our fans like how you ended up going from playing for the U.S. national team and then the, what the transition was like to then commentating and talking about your teammates while you, yeah. you know, you're doing your job? Yeah, I would love to. Um, I know I still remember you guys meeting you guys in Vancouver. That was such a cool spot. That was I think the Randy, best. Randy Chastain was there at that moment too. Though. So that was pretty cool to come full circle and meet you guys. And God, it's crazy. It's been like five, five plus years. So yeah. Um, yeah, to talk a little bit about how I got into the TV um, world is actually when I got hurt in 2008, when I tore my ACL and tore my left ankle, um, reconstructed, I actually reached out to our professional league, the WPS at the time and said, hey, you know, obviously we all know I'm injured. I'm going to be injured for a while. I would love to work for the league and work for you guys and travel around and interview the players and just start to get experience. And um, I was fortunate enough for the WPS to be on board with that and say, uh, yeah, that would be awesome. And so while I was on the injured, um, and I remember I even have footage, like pictures of me on my crutches and my cast um, and my neat big knee brace and being like trying to dress up on top. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you got to send us that. Yeah, can yeah. you find a picture? <laughs> oh, That's I will amazing. send it to you guys. It's pretty, it's hilarious. Um, 
but I started to go to the U.S. Men's National Team games because they were prepping for the 2008 Olympics um, and then doing some WPS games and just doing interviews and starting to get comfortable in front of camera. And let me tell you, um, you think you're going to be ready to be on live TV. And like you guys know, I'm sure you remember that exact feeling when that red <laughs> light comes on. As much as you try to prepare in front of a mirror <laughs> or in front of your parents or your loved one, there's nothing like what happens to your chest when that red light comes on and the bubby, like your heart literally, yes. I remember feeling like it was coming out of my chest. <laughs> and I remember um, one of the press officers, Aaron Heifetz, who I'm close to in the background going like this, <laughs> because I was talking so fast and my heart was literally, I, I can't even, I, I remember that feeling distinctly. Um, and I mean, that was the start of it. And I think it took like another three, four years of me just dabbling in it. I went to the 2012 Olympics and I did some TV stuff over there covering the team um, and feeling the same way. It really never went away, <laughs> but I started to try to embrace it because I remember being a player and I always got nervous, always. Even if it was like an inner squad scrimmage, I still got nervous. And so I always tried to translate that from, okay, I got nervous before soccer games and I played well and that translated perfectly. I, I told myself, well, I should get nervous to even go on TV because that means that I'm ready to go on TV. And so I would say that just by interviewing people, getting reps, it wasn't until 2015 at the Women's World Cup in Vancouver where I went on TV for 33 days straight that by the end of that, that World was... Cup, I was like, okay, I think I got this because it's <laughs> all about reps, right? Yeah. Um, you seem very confident on camera to us. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. Even it's when I dropped my phone uh, backstage and it made a noise. <laughs> on air. That was so um, funny. It, it, it takes a while, right? Like, and then when I'm not, because I'm not on TV every day, I only do U.S. Women's National Team games or World Cups. It's not like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm able to get reps every day. So it's trying to fine tune what your skills are and what you're good at, but also work on what you're not. So luckily the Fox producers send me footage and, and help me edit my stuff where I can go back and look at things. But really it's taken up until the 2019 World Cup for me to feel like really good. Um, so I would say it's been a work in progress. And since I haven't done TV a lot this year because of COVID, I can only imagine how my heart is going to be pounding the next time I'm on TV. It just doesn't go away. <laughs> That's so funny, but that's like uh, also another great point of advice is that like that nervousness is not a sign that you weren't meant for it. Yep. It was a sign that you were meant to literally work through that nervous feeling the same way you had to work through it in soccer. And eventually when you put in the reps, that gives you the confidence and that settles some of those nerves. But those nerves are a big reason why people quit or why people don't bother pursuing something. So the fact that you stuck through that because that feeling is not fun <laughs> and exactly. I've never even been on live to be like that but <laughs> I was just gonna say that like you stuck with it and you get better and better and that is what it's like to be an athlete you're always gonna be scared and nervous that you're gonna fail but like if you're not gonna practice and and show up you're not gonna yep. get anywhere and I think that's it's really I, I mean Think about PKs. Like, do people honestly oh. not get afraid when they take a PK, <laughs> even if they do a thousand reps? <laughs> it's so, and it every is player so true. in the world, the biggest players in the world, everyone yeah. feels that way. But it's embracing that and going back and wanting more of it. And not running from it. Yes. Yes. And you know yeah. what to do. It's like you have to talk to yourself in a positive way and be like, I know what to do. I'm here for a reason. Like, yeah. you yep. know, that, that, self -talk that inner is mind. Real. Yep. yep. Like I got this. I've done all the work I've meant for this. Like the self-talk that happens before I go on camera, it's incredible. And even looking at professionals who have been in the TV world, Alexi Lalas has been in the TV world for 10 plus years. He moves away from us before we go on camera. And he, he like talks to himself. I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, what is he doing? <laughs> and he literally is like pumping himself up and like wow. going over in his head what he's about to do. So I'm like, That's you know cool. what? He's a pro, like a for real pro. So if yeah. he's doing that, I'm going to embrace whatever I need to do to make sure that I'm good when, when that red light comes on. It would be funny yeah. if they, like, you know, go over to you on over. camera and you're all, like, hyping your own <laughs> selves up, like, in the corners. Totally. <laughs> what, what's, that, what's that standing position where you, like, oh, yeah, it's that, head, right? No, it's like what's this. Oh, it's that? Oh, the I super, do this. What? Uh, the superhero pose. You look yes. out, chest up. Who, did, who was we, that? Like, Someone does that like in the bathroom stall before they go on camera. Yeah. 
Probably Brandy Chastain. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Good chance it is. Who's it. who's the um like is there an interview that like sticks out in your mind of someone that you've like interviewed before or just like a cool moment on camera? Like something that you rem like you you'll remember forever? Yeah, I think being in Vancouver, um, being with Carly Lloyd after that game. Um, and having her come to set and, um, you know, being former teammates with her and friends with her for so many years and being able to capture that with her after probably the most amazing World Cup performance by any U.S. Women's National Team player individually. Um, and to see that happiness and to capture that in person. And I have goosebumps because that was pretty freaking cool. Um, yeah. And then just awesome. being able to to be with her in that moment off camera too, like friend to friend, like, oh my God, you are incredible. And to be able to experience that with her was, was pretty cool. And then to be with that team that night after winning and partying and just being <laughs> able to enjoy that with them, um, that's off camera, but that was <laughs> a really, really, really cool day and special day for me to be with them, being former teammates and good friends with them. It's amazing. I'm pretty sure we snuck into that party. I'm oh, pretty I'm sure we got kicked guys. out. <laughs> we, got, we probably got kicked out, but I'm pretty sure we snuck in. That was the best decision you could have made. That was an epic Oh, my party. gosh. With DJ, uh, what was the DJ's name? DJ oh Spin Easy. Spin Easy. DJ Spin Easy. <laughs> okay, was, we were there. We were there. I remember. Oh my gosh. But anyways, <laughs> that is, that's incredible, Leslie. And I thought you were going to say, like, some, you know, someone – someone else but honestly I love that you picked one of your really good friends on the day that was her probably her best mm -hmm. performance and best day for her so that is really freaking cool yeah. yeah it was it was pretty special so you have three young girls who are very young what are their ages at this point well now I have a four-year-old so five months two and four and four okay so they yeah. are still very young yeah. But um, as they are growing up in the world and hopefully in sports, if they like sports, what is something that you hope that your daughters learn from you? Um, and the example that you've set as just an overall boss. Well, thanks. I hope, <laughs> that. I hope that, you know, they didn't get to see me on the field. So everything that I'm doing now off the field, I hope just translates to them. Um, I want them to work hard because that was my foundation and I want them to never quit on anything. I want them to work hard and I want them to be passionate and I want them to be kind. Um, and all I dream for is, you know, Ricky played soccer too. So of course, like soccer's in our blood and we would yes. be gutted if they didn't play. Um, <laughs> if it's not soccer, it's something else. Um, I think having girls in sports is the most crucial thing you can do for, for girls. Um, I look back at the way I grew up and I, and I cannot imagine where I'd be at if I didn't play sports. And I thank my parents and God for allowing me to be introduced to sports because it helped um, my trajectory in so many ways. And I hope that my girls get that same opportunity. So I think Ricky and I are going to give them every resource and opportunity we can to play every sport. I think as far as me, I just want to be positive and happy and show them what hard work does. Um, even last night after the park, we were racing my husband home. He was on the bike and we were in the car and it's a race to get home. And Olivia was like, oh, mommy, we're not going to win the trophy. And like, she was gutted about even like a race to get home. And the oh, they got it in hard. them. <laughs> I know. And I remember Lil, Christine Lilly telling me about these stories when she had two girls and they were young and being like, oh my God, you're crazy. That DNA is crazy. And now it's <laughs> happened to us. Like, but I love that. And I want them to know that hard work is always going to pay off and to be a fighter and to know that they can go out and accomplish anything and that they can do if they put their mind to it. And I just hope that being a mom um, and working hard in everything that I do, being a mother, being a wife, being an entrepreneur, being on TV, everything that I'm doing, that they're watching me and they're watching me and knowing that I'm having fun doing it and I'm happy and I'm working my butt off and that they can do the same thing. And even if it's not exactly what I'm doing, whatever they want to do, like I'm pretty sure Olivia is going to be like a performer, a singer and entertainer. That's great. I'm not, I've never been in those categories and I want her to go on and hey you go be a little Beyonce whatever you want to do like, <laughs> I just hope that I'm surrounding them around positive amazing rock star women and I'm lucky to have so many so many 
rock stars in my life. Like Allie Wagner, Danielle Slayton and Brandi Chastain are three of my close friends that all live right here. And my girls are surrounded by them all the time. And the Santa Clara women's soccer team are my girls' nannies. And to be able to have those sort of girls in my daughter's lives, like what better women would you want to look up to than those women and hopefully their mom? Like that's the that. best thing that we can do. This is incredible. Cause like it's, we had the 99ers, but we didn't have as many like role models growing up, you know, looking up to. And I just think that right now, like your kids and the generations coming up, like they have so many women to look up to and know that things are po like goal their goals are possible and attainable Absolutely. and I think that's just so wonderful your kids are going to be a bunch of studs I'll tell you that. <laughs> I hope I hope <laughs> yep let's hope <laughs> well thank you so much for speaking with us Leslie this is yeah. awesome I that's love gonna... talking with you girls um and I'm so honored to be on here with you guys and I'm so happy for you all and I look up to you I love what you guys have created and what you're doing and constantly putting out there. And thank you for being amazing role models to me and my daughter. So um, this is pretty cool. And I love how everything comes full circle and we're still like collaborating and working together and talking all the time five years later. It's awesome. It's really cool. Yep. It is really, it's full you, circle. Leslie. It's crazy. It full circle. Love it. And I'm going to leave this podcast and I'm going to be more positive, hardworking, and happy. That's my goal for the week now. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> we'll have a great day, Leslie. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, guys.